Oh, uh, can I give up my five minutes to somebody else? <laughs> uh, that's, um, that was quite uh, an impressive few comments from some very good friends. Thank you. I, um, I wanted to uh, say that being here tonight uh, and receiving this wonderful award is, is something that's quite exceptional, especially to be with the other people who are being honored tonight and who have been honored previously by the Public Policy Forum. And, uh, you know, awards like this make you look back a bit. And so I look at my career and I think, well, gee, you know, I was in journalism and then I went into politics and I've been on the boards of two big banks and now with lawyers. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm not doing very well at picking professions that are most beloved in Canada. <laughs> but they have been professions that have allowed me to get involved in public policy in a lot of different ways, and as you've seen, that in different areas. And I think that those who are here in this room, we celebrate public policy. We know what a powerful tool it is. We know how it shapes our country. It gives us our direction going forward. And so it's very seductive and addictive to be involved and to have had the chance to play little pieces along the way. But I was thinking that tonight, instead of uh, looking back at some of those really interesting public policy initiatives like the carbon tax or labor negotiations or the Economic Advisory Council, which was really quite an exceptional experience uh, for all of us to work with the government during that crisis. Instead, I'd like to deal with some unfinished business. And from my point of view, I can't pass up the opportunity with so many influential, involved people who are here tonight uh, to talk about what I think is perhaps the most serious public policy issue facing our country, and that's health care. I follow in the steps of David Dodge and Ed Clark, who lately are stepping out on this issue and starting to talk more about it, because it is such a crucial issue. The medical system, the public health care system that we have got in Canada right now is not sustainable. It will not last and it cannot last. But what bothers me, I think, more than anything is not that we've got a problem. It's that somehow we've shut down debate and we won't even possibly talk about where the solutions lie. You know, as a finance minister, I managed to bring the growth rate of the health care budget down to 6%. It was still growing at 6%. We were criticized from every quarter for cutting back to 6%. And yet that's way more than inflation. And I would think most of the provinces are going along at about that rate. I am, you know, God bless the provinces that are going to try to get it down to 3 But even 6% with the demands and the expectations and the model that we've got now was pretty well impossible. So again, across the country, those 6% increases over time have reached almost 50% of most provincial budgets. And so it's not sometime in the future we're talking about, it's squeezing out the dollars today. It's squeezing out education, it's squeezing out dollars for research, it's squeezing out any funds that we've got for social assistance in our country. And so we've got a spending model that is out of control and not working. But guess what? We've got a tsunami of baby boomers who are coming into our most expensive medical years. And we are all about to, here I am, I'm announcing my retirement. We're about to leave the tax-paying jobs and therefore, the revenue drops back from any contribution I make at the time that I'm going to need more services. So on top of that, we are about to start negotiating the health care accord with the federal government, which is due. And everybody in this room knows that times are tough for all governments. We know deficits have to be dealt with. Money is going to be tight. So here's your situation. You've got already a model that's not working and is costing too much huge extra demand about to come on to the on top of that model 
fewer of those people still working and paying taxes, and now we're going to try and renegotiate a deal with Ottawa for all of the provinces that really we're all having trouble trying to afford. So the problem is there. But in my opinion, the real issue is that political correctness tops Trump's action. And in fact, it's worse than that. Political correctness right now is trumping even talking about action. And so, you know, heaven help the politician who stands up and says, well, you know what, this model really doesn't work and perhaps we'll have to think about a second tier or an alternative uh, way of funding this or maybe we'll even have to, you know, look at some, get rid of block funding and start putting the dollars with the patients. Well, as soon as a politician stands up and says that, whack, you're betraying Canada. And what about the province that says, we don't have enough money for this, so we're going to have to maybe raise a health contribution tax, we've got to look at user's fees, or maybe we'll have to increase insurance costs and expand it. Or in my province, we're now saying, maybe we should bring in people from around the world, and we'll have medical tourism. They'll come in and they'll bring their money to help us pay for our health care system and a model that doesn't work. Whack. You just want the American system. So we have totally stifled debate. I haven't got the answer of what it's going to look like, but I sure, as I sure won't. <laughs> I sure won't be able to make a decision or even participate if we don't put this on the table. We have to start looking and examining and poking and thinking, and we all have some culpability in this. Uh, you know, first of all, the politician, and there are some who won't stand up and say anything about it because they're afraid of being turfed from office. And the other side of that are the politicians who, whenever they see any little comment about change or different direction, pounce on it to make a, a great game and headline out of it. The media, I'm part of the media. I mean, there is some blame there for some who would rather deal with the confrontation because it's easy and it's a headline and, you know, rather than say, let's be a forum for debate. Let's try to bring out the thoughtful responses on all sides of these issues to try and find out how we go forward. And of course, the third group that's quite responsible are all the baby boomers. We've been going along. Everyone in this room will be fine. Our health care will be taken care of but we haven't been thinking long-term enough to think about how we keep it for our kids and our grandkids. And so tonight, along with being grateful for the award, I have a plea for everyone here. For those of us who care about universal, quality, health care for everybody in a sustainable format, please, let the debate begin. Thank you.